Hi, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. Jody Richardson Delgado. Today we're going to be talking about human development. Specifically, we're going to be talking about prenatal development. Now, the first stage of prenatal development is the zygote, and this is where the single cell is formed by the union of the sperm and the egg. Now, this union typically happens in the fallopian tube, and this zygote will travel down the fallopian tube into the uterus, where it will attach to the uterine wall. This is the germinal period from conception to the end of the second week. This is when the little zygote will start to really rapidly change and develop and grow and multiply. And then the embryonic period or the embryo period is from the third to the eighth week. This is where a lot of the internal organs just start to form, but the main energy of what is happening during this period of time is forming the heart and parts of the central nervous system. So the heart is starting to form as well as we're going to start to see some heartbeat at the end of the eighth week, beginning of the ninth week. And you'll also see some of the spinal cord and little buds for the brain start to develop. So the fetal period is from second month all the way to birth. This is where we see a lot of rapid weight gain all of the organs are formed during this period. The systems and structure are fully developed at birth. So from week eight all the way to week 40, this is when things are growing and developing. Most of the energy, most of the resources will go into forming the brain as well as the spinal cord. When we are born, the head is the largest part of the baby because most of the resources have gone into forming the brain. Critical periods are times in our development when internal and external influences can have major effects on our development. And at other periods of time, those same influences will have little or no effect. Now, what's interesting to me is that we know that there are critical periods for, let's say, the heart, and there's critical periods for, let's say, the lungs. Um, and the brain, of course, that critical period is pretty much throughout the entire pregnancy and where internal and external influences can really impact the formation, the functioning of these internal as well as external parts of our bodies. Now, sometimes we can narrow this down very, very closely because we've been able to do some really good research. Other times, we're not quite sure exactly when that critical period is. So this is one of the reasons why we've done so much research on teratogens. Now, teratogens are environmental threats that can cause damage during prenatal development. Some of the categories of teratogens include legal and illegal drugs. This is why many women are given a list of over-the-counter medications that they can and can't take during their pregnancy. And oftentimes it's during the entire pregnancy. And again, it's because we don't always know exactly when that window of time is that it will affect, let's say, the liver or the heart. Part of that is because there's individual differences in how we grow and develop. Think about puberty and adolescence, right? We all don't go through puberty at the exact same time. There's a window of time that we know that this starts to happen and ends, but not everyone is on the exact same schedule. And the same is true for our development in the womb. So legal drugs, again, they can include over-the-counter cold medications and other types of medications. Illegal drugs are also included in this category, such as cocaine, marijuana, different substances. Again, this is not recommended during pregnancy at all. Also included in this category would be alcohol. And we've studied quite a bit with fetal alcohol syndrome. The effects of legal and illegal drugs can include things like low birth weight, low IQ, um, physical malformations, things like that, that can really cause an issue. Disease and malnutrition are some of the biggest issues that we see worldwide for fetuses. With disease, we're looking at things like HIV, we're looking at measles, rubella, mumps, things like that that really affect the fetus. And this can cause things like low birth weight, low IQ, malformations, and also difficulty in irritability with the child once they are born. So when a child is irritable, it can be difficult for parents to bond with that baby.
Other stresses that we know that can impact the development of a fetus include exposure to x-rays as well as stress. So exposure to x-rays, I think we think of like going to the dentist and getting x-rays and things like that. Absolutely not recommended, although we can wear some protective gear. The x-rays that we're talking about often are environmental x-rays, such as when the tsunami hit Japan. Many of the children that were born after those x-rays were released in the environment and from the nuclear power plant, we saw children born with many malformations. Stress is also a teratogen, and we see that children that are born to mothers who were in extremely stressful situations during their pregnancy are more irritable and more difficult to feed. Again, it impacts some of that bonding that can happen between a parent and a child. I hope this video has helped. Please click the Advantage logo to subscribe.